So last time what we have done was m by n composite switch and a blocking probability estimation for that. And we also understood what is time congestion and what is the call congestion. So we will just move ahead further but before that let me introduce something called time switching because this will be an important uh, thing and most of the time in most of the commercial systems this is what actually is being used. We will always try to use that. So basically the idea is very simple. Most of the voice which is transported is basically usually you will be doing a sampling at uh, 8 close samples per second that is uh, and once you do the sampling you will for each sample you will use it uh, you will do analog to digital conversion of that and what you will do you will get 8 bits for each voice sample and that actually means you will get 64 kilobit per second stream and usually 64 kbps is a very small bandwidth and if you have a fiber if you have a higher bandwidth link you will not transmit one single voice channel. So already there has been standards which make a higher bitrate stream out of multiple voice circuits. Well, this is a very common practice. So I think one of the examples I had done earlier in the previous semester was even carrier system, even in T1 both. So even carrier system is actually is going to have 32 slots and as I have already mentioned in the previous lecture that every framing whatever is being used anywhere is going to be of 125 microsecond duration. Okay. Everything is of 125 microsecond duration whether it is SDH frame, whether it is E1 frame, T1 frame, E3 frame whatever you take only number of voice slots which are transported is going to change. Okay. So this actually means I am anyway getting a time multiplex signal which is available. Now how to do switching with that is the question. So usually there will be slots. Now another important thing that these frame boundaries are extremely important because slots location is what it will identify the circuit. So when you are setting up a path from the source to destination, it is a slot number which actually matters. Okay. So if you say this is going to be from your phone to some other's phone, this is the slot number being given, your voice sample will only be going in this particular slot in this particular frame. Okay. So now this is something which we are going to use to build up a time switch. Now one uh, thing is this frame boundaries need to be identified. So frame delineation mechanism has to be there. So usually there will be some mechanism of that kind. So even uh, system usually uses two slots. One slot is for identification of the frame boundaries. And second slot which is used is for signaling purpose. Okay. So usually this will be And similarly there is another format called T1 carrier system. This one is still, this is not used in India. What we use in India is this. But with voice over IP coming even this will not be required in time to come actually. So T1 carrier system will be using 24 slots in 125 microsystem. This is again 125 microsecond duration, frame duration. We don't bother about this. You have to push in 32 8 bit, 32 octets in 125 microsecond duration. Because every person who is talking over the phone is going to generate one voice sample every 125 microsecond. So you have to give him chance again. So frame has to be over within 125 microsecond. You cannot stop. So usually in this case, I think. Uh, 16th, 0 equals to 50. I think it starts from 0, the 15th one and the 31st. 
is what is being actually used for uh, this one is used for framing purpose this one is used for signaling purpose that's the way actually it is okay in this case there is no octet reserved for signaling signaling is done in a different fashion here one extra bit is actually going to be used for framing so here this one is used for framing the whole octet itself here there is only one bit which is being added ok now this extra paraphernalia here and similarly how the signaling will be done is every sixth frame so there are many frames you will usually create a super frame of 12 frames and sixth and twelfth frame the voice sample will not be of 8 bits it will be of 7 bits ok so lower most order bit for every voice channel will be used for signaling so this provides a low bandwidth low capacity signaling channel between two end points ok now the problem is this signaling this framing cannot be is not required in switching switching is a box is a device so first thing which you do is you remove all this extra stuff out of the frame you generate your internal time frame and when the internal time frame is generated inside the box this will contain purely the markers where the frame boundaries are starting and ending is handled by the device inside handled by the box or the switch it is either on a separate channel or a marker or a clocking whatever way ok but it is not part of the system this is a serial stream this is going over a single wire, wire or single fiber so you cannot keep these frame markers cannot be sent separately within a device this can be done within a box this can be done similarly this signaling channel is being already separated out signaling is usually separated out and whatever is the processor of the switch that will take care of that particular information so signaling nav is never required to be switched signaling is between two boxes which are connected for example these are two boxes connected signaling is between these two intelligent entities so that is either carried by that uh, one bit in every octet every sixth frame in t1 carrier system or either by this 15th slot I am starting always the slot number from 0 so 0 to 31 it is a 32 slot system 0 to 23 one extra bit will be added ok so all this is going to be stripped off before you can do switching because this is usually is a confusing point to the students you should be careful in this you have to strip all these off before you can actually build up a time switch so you will get actually a raw frame raw frame will be like this there will be nothing but voice samples voice circuits so these are for example I am showing 8 of them so these are channel numbers there is no separate frame markers these are internally being maintained by the device or the switch box so again the next frame will come one will repeat here and so on the eighth one so this is what will be the raw thing which will be coming into the switch box and how the switching will happen because the location of a slot inside the frame itself identifies the source as well as destination so this corresponds to some source one which will depend on the interconnection of the previous switch this also identifies to which output port it is going to go if my this box can somehow swap these positions it can read this octet and put this octet here read this octet and put it here swapping can be done or moving the thing I will be able to achieve switching and that is what the time switch actually does ok so I can give an example I am just taking a four slot a simple system and I have to now this is the input and then there is the output thing I am showing two frames now the problem is if these are happening at the same instant 
I want to do switching between 1 and 3. Okay. So, the input which is coming from port number 3 has to go to port 1. I certainly cannot move it here, that is not possible. Because this has already passed through, they are at the same time. What can happen is 3 can be moved to any slots which is later, not earlier. Now, this is actually one subtle thing. Now, there are two ways you can handle the switching in this case again. And this is, uh, I think, implementation dependent does not matter actually, honestly speaking. But one important thing that all these actual values may not remain together in the outgoing frame. That is very important. Okay. So, uh, one very good example is say, I want to do a switching. I, let me just put a switching pattern. Say 224, say 322 and 4 to 1. I have just taken something arbitrary. So, this are the, again I am taking all unidirectional, not bidirectional switch. Okay. So, that is the way. Uh, input, output. input to output mapping inside the switch. I am only worried about the switch part. And switch is a generic device. I can use this thing even for packet switching. If I can change the circuits, or these maps, every packet duration, I can even create a packet switch also. So, that is why I am doing it in a generic fashion. But voice, you are right, if 1 has to connect to 3, 3 always has to connect to 1. Usually it should be, but it need not be. If, for example, I can give you an example, if it is a voice circuit, it is a radio transmission over a telephone. There used to be that sim, this kind of service earlier days. Radio yeah, radio over uh, telephone used to be there. So, in that case, there is no reverse channel is not required. And it usually used to be a multicast. So, one is being copied to multiple slots kind of thing. If it is a time switch or if it is a space switch, I will do duplication. Remember in that uh, space switches, I have not uh, discussed about that actually. So, if, if it is a crossbar, this certainly can be done. If it is not a crossbar, then this cannot be done if one to one map is there. But remember, I have when, when we were discussing switching, we, I always told it is a strictly non blocking switch and it is nothing but equivalent to a crossbar. So, if this input has to go to all four outputs, this can always be done. So, this can always be done, that is my assumption. And if it is a true crossbar, this can always be done. This depends on how you build up the implement the switch. Mostly time switching, time and space. Uh, routers work in slightly different way. Uh, they are slotted structures. They actually use, they have a time and time is slotted into small things. And switch will have cross or bar state or maybe this interconnection map I call it, input to output map. So, for one slot duration there is one IO map, depending on whatever packets are coming, they will be moved to the output depending on that IO map. And next slot again it will change. And this has to be dynamically computed depending on the packets which are going to be there in the head of the queue. And if your speed here is very fast, okay. So, number of packets which are coming per slot is 1. Outgoing packet number of packets going per port per slot is again 1. But incoming I can actually do the transfers at much faster rate. Which actually means I can actually read two packets for same output port and transmit them simultaneously. That is also possible. So, that will lead to what we call uh, the blocking will not be there in that case. And that is known as speed of factor. So, if it is running at n times higher speed, even if all packets are for same output port, in one single slot I can read all of them and then put it at the outgoing thing, but outgoing port cannot transmit it, remember. So, it has to use something called buffer. So, it will be put on the queue, but only one packet per slot is will be going out. When this buffer is full, packet will be dropped, you cannot help it actually. So, techn technically it is similar thing. Uh, 
Switching is the core internal layer. Routing is identifying what we call the paths. So who is the next destination to whom I should forward the packet? Okay. Switching is actually creating the path. Forwarding is by looking at routing table, finding out to which outgoing port it has to go. Okay. So these are three different processes which run in every router or every switch. Well, we call them switch or router, but it contains all the three things actually embedded. So in this case, once we do this map, I can just, uh, I will actually do the exact uh, implementation of uh, this particular time switch. But as of now, you assume we are going to implement it through delay lines, some kind of delay. Okay, so this can be done by delaying one by, one can be moved too easily to three, remember. Two can be moved to four. But whenever the destination port number is smaller, this cannot be done. So three cannot go to two here. So three has to go to this thing. And of course four has to go to one. So four will go to one. And similarly, this one will come here at third slot and two will come here at the fourth slot. Now this frame contains two octets from the current frame itself, incoming frame and two octets from the earlier frame. So this is one technique you don't worry, but you try to minimize on the delay of transmission. Okay. Second possibility could have been you will get exact one slot delay, one slot plus higher something. It will not be minimizing the delays. Actually, if you want to maintain all these four together all the time, then this one and two will be shifted here. And remember the delay line length requirement for this kind of system will be, what is the maximum? In this case, I have already done three is going to two. That's the maximum. Exactly this much slots, four slot delay will be required. Four, 4 minus 1 actually, 3 slot delay will be required in worst case. Okay. But in case other scheme, where I am not going to do it this way, the 1 has to go to 4, 2, sorry, 1 has to go to 3 in this case, 2 has to go to 4, the 3 has to go to 2, 4 has to go to 1. Worst case scenario would have been if 1 would have gone to the 4 actually. So you require 2 into n minus 1, that much maximum delay. I have given this map, I am trying to implement this map. So this pattern will keep on changing if you change your map actually. Okay. So, but this will require higher amount of delay. Usually this is not preferred. 2n minus 1 is 2 into 4 minus 1, 7. So, you require 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If 1 is going to go to 4, you require 7. Yeah, that's, that's the advantage of that scheme. But you are not putting the things together. Why, if it's a circuit switch system, it does not matter. And if it's a packet switch system, you will always be happy. <laughs> a packet switching system does not have this time switching concept. You just do the scheduling of packets, and packets are just inserted. The whole packet belongs to one source, and is going to go to one destination. You transmit at faster rates, the packet duration goes down. Here it does not matter. One slot, one octet is going to come every 125 microsecond. Okay, so you do a lot of aggregation this way. Okay. Can it extend beyond confidence of the suppose? Uh, no, usually it will never be done. It will never be done. This cannot go to, you cannot have any octet from here will not go to here. That's not possible. That's usually will never be done. And I think there is no case where it will be required. So then for the case 7 so 1 will come to 4 of 1 will come to 4. Then anywhere 2 will go to then 2. 
Only two wants to go where, for example. You give me the position. For example, I change one to four. That's the map. You give me any other map, actually. Say, so in this case, one will come to four, two will come to three, three will come to two, four will come to one. This, it does not matter. It will never be going to the another one. Within this, you should be able to finish it. So there are two possibilities actually. So this is what basically is the time switching concept is. And the way I think it has been told at lot of places is by using multiplexer and demultiplexer. So if you have, so this is the equivalent. And I put a time switch in between, which will do this job of mapping. And I have 1, 2, 3, and 4. What I have created? So I am still using a time switch, but using a mux and demux, rotary mux and demux. They do it synchronously, actually, remember. It always go to 1, 2, 3, 4, that also goes to 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime. So if I do this, I am able to create a space switch, remember. There is nothing but technically a space switch. So I am not worried about, this input is sampled only every 125 microsecond. Okay, if it would have been analog, so there is a ADC, and then there is one sample generated to every 125 microsecond that always goes into the first slot of the frame. And that can be switched to any outgoing port and there is a DAC you will put. It will become nothing but a crossbar. You put a DAC here, digital to analog converter. Here you put a DC. This is equivalent of a crossbar. But you can do time switching because you are using a digital format. So far, we have whatever, whatever we have done till the earlier lecture, we were not bothered. It could have been very well analog telephony. But only with digital format, you can do time switching. So, so far, this is fine. But we have also done a class network. Now, can, can I expand on to the class network with this? So, can I use time switch there? My question is this. So, let us draw the class network and then so as I told, the class network is, we have total R1 switches and you have M1 incoming ports, you have N1 outgoing ports, okay. And you have here M2, N2 outgoing ports. And then there is a third stage, uh, that is what I had done earlier. We also had the condition that N1 is equal to R2 is equal to M3. Okay. And R1 is equal to M2. This is 1 and N2 is equal to R3. That is what we had done. So that is why this guy can connect to each one of the switches. If there is some middle stage one, it will connect to here. 
So every switch is connected to every, but every switch in the next stage by exactly one link. And we of course have done the case. I also proved what is a strictly non-blocking switch. In what, what condition? If it's symmetric. Symmetricity actually means that M1 is equal to N3 and R1 is equal to R3 under that condition. You have a variable R2. You change R2, N1 and N3 also will change. That was the case which we took. And intuitively I gave a proof that R2 has to be greater than or equal to 2 into M minus 1 for the switch to be strictly non-blocking. So formally there is actually is minimum of something it has to be greater than or equal to that. We will come to that thing later on. Now my question is this purely is a space switch. How to put in a time switch here? Can I do something with this time switch? Uh, because time switch has a peculiar problem. This interchange of slots will be done because you are writing into the memory and reading from the memory. And memory or RAM has an access time limitation. So you have to write two n words and you have to read the two n words back. Sorry, n words you will be writing and you will be reading. And this has to be done in 125 microsecond. So if your access time of a memory is the access, okay. So 125 microsecond and x, uh, the n read access and n write access, so 2 n. So this is the access time which is available for each word, okay, for read write. So this has to be always greater than or equal to T access, which actually implies your n has to be less than or equal to 125 microsecond by 2 into T access. So you require very fast memories if you require a higher n. So this value will, if you keep as less as possible, so that you can have higher and higher n. So n is also limited. In any time switch you cannot have n very large, okay. n is limited. So how to solve this particular problem? So I cannot create a very large dimensional time switch. I have to do something and we have to do something here. So any guess, any suggestion from you people? Huh? Go ahead, go ahead. One frame is coming with four slots, right? Four simultaneous time switches. Now, where you would like to put the time switch? In this stage. Yeah, that's a one possible configuration, but that's tricky to do. But a simpler version is. I can use time switch here, first and third stage. But I will not be requiring R2 switches there, that is the important thing. So let me implement using time, space and time combination. We call it first stage is time, second is stage, third is time, it switch is known as TST, time, space, time. This also becomes a closed network, nothing else. The whole mathematics which is represented which is actually is needed for this switch is also valid for this configuration. Okay. Okay. So let me do it. Uh, okay. I will draw it here. So let me take a time switch and these are the incoming frames. I will define this thing as M1 slots. I am not worried about signaling and framing. So that we will take care. So for me, it's only pure M1 voices, voice slots which are coming in. Okay. And I can now, but the problem is I have told you that it, whatever the number of incoming slots has to be the outgoing slot. I have not told that actually. I have only used that thing in the example. But that does not mean it's always going to be true. You technically can have 
n1 slots going out. Now that is a complicated thing to handle because whatever scheme I have told for swapping by providing appropriate delays those cannot be maintained in this case. The whole octet has to be written whole frame has to be written first in the memory then only it can be read out at a different rate because remember still the frame duration is 125 microsecond that does not change. So, in reality I will again do this particular implementation of m by n time switch later on. Uh, we actually use two RAMs. So, when the first frame is written in first RAM only writing will be done. Reading will be done the, from the other RAM actually and that will be done with a different clocking rate so that you can read faster. Only problem is this if this m1 is smaller than n1 only m1 slots will be occupied remaining will be free that is possible switches are implemented that way and if this n1 is smaller than m1 some of the slots have to be dropped those connections cannot be made. Okay. It means those voice slots here will be busy because what happens when a frame is generated uh, the switch which generates the frame or the mux will maintain the flags that which all actually slots are currently being occupied or busy or which are free. So, whichever is a smaller value of these only those many slots or those many voice circuits can be set up and that will be maintained as only those many will be maintained as free status uh, sorry busy status and remaining will be kept as free status. Now, this is exactly equal to this only thing m 1 was in space here n 1 was in space there it is in time that is the only difference. Okay. So, I can actually now put in the same thing multiple of them maybe I can put them how many r 1. Now, the only problem which comes is these switches. So, how this switch is connected? You take the first input here, first input from this, first input from every switch here, first input from every switch here. So, maybe common sense will tell okay, I can actually do a DMUX here, create physically 1 to n 1 and then I can have n switch connecting one from here similarly there is a mux in this fashion this is not required actually. I can implement it this way and I require again you will again have a time switch perfectly equivalent configuration both. Only thing the switching I have implemented in is time here and I have converted from time to space using this DMUX separating out all, all voice slots. So, first outgoing port first outgoing port physically is here I have separated it out first is here. So, all first are being put together in one switch. So, this switch is equivalent to this. So, this is going to 1 to R 2. Uh, this is clear so far? Or is there any confusion? I can repeat. They are this one, this one will also have R 2 inputs you are right 1 to R 2 inputs. So, remember n 1 is equal to R 2 that condition will always be satisfied n 1 is equal to R 2 is equal to m 3 that condition hell always has to be satisfied it is a cross network. So, what I have done is or you look at this particular thing this is equivalent to what? Remember I have drawn a figure earlier if I can draw m 
time multiplexer with m inputs i can generate m slots i did the time switching i am doing dmux this is nothing but this switch so i have replaced this thing by a time switch actually is equivalence now only one important thing which you will notice during the period when the time slot number 1 is there which one of the switches is in action now are all the switches in action all the time you tell me that only first switch will be operating only first switch is operating all other are silent because their output will second output will come only during the second period i am not doing any time expansion in the dmux if i simply just split them i have just used that pointer thing so one by one one by one it just is spitting out whatever is coming in the frame here so only first switch will be operating at this time when the second slot time will come second one will be operating then r2 will be operating then again one will operate then two will operate and so on round robin fashion they are actually all operating one by one i can do something smart actually i can use this itself gives a clue that i can replace this whole thing by nothing but one single space switch and this is space which is of which how much dimensions r1 by because the r1 inputs are there m2 is equal to r1 okay and n2 is equal to r3 so this will be r1 by r3 switch technically so there is instead of having r2 switches i have only one switch only problem is when the slot number 1 will come it has to have some interconnection pattern it will act like switch number 1 of middle stage when slot 2 will come my interconnection should change so i should be able to build up a control system by which the switch configuration will keep on changing with every slot so it will be able to operate as r2 switches because they are happening in different time slots so it is technically possible and this is known as time multiplex switch because of this this switch is a single switch but it is acting as r2 switches and it's in happening in time multiplex mode so is a time multiplex space switch actually so it's not multiplexing of signals it is a multiplexing of space switches which is happening in time so it changes every 125 microsecond n2 times it will change or oh, sorry n1 times it will change so n1 is the number of slots which are here so will take n1 different configuration every 125 microsecond and this is nothing but equivalent configuration of clos network but this is a time space time configuration now oh, we did the strictly non blocking thing last time now can you give me the condition using the same clues what will be condition here for strictly non blocking switch how you will find it out here yeah. you should be able to do it actually you same principle that how many these ports will be busy in worst case there is one free port here one free port here they have to be connected so how many maximum ports here will be busy how many maximum ports will be busy here so how many slots can be in worst case will be busy here m minus 1 take a symmetric case again the way last time we did so here it is m n this is again n and here it is again m okay 
so in worst case here m minus 1 will get occupied because one is there one slot is there to which need to be connected to one slot here so only m minus 1 slots are occupied so only m minus 1 will be occupied here and this switch is operating as in every slot some switch in worst case scenario if you look at this particular frame and this frame the occupied slots may not have any overlap okay they will be like this if you take these two slots this is another one so you have m minus 1 being occupied here worst case scenario from here onward again m minus 1 occupied there is no overlap of time is very similar condition and if i can have i have these extra stuff available extra slots available i can always use that to set up the connection okay so condition is 2 into m minus 1 plus 1 and that condition was on number of switches here here switch is only one it's in time multiplex mode so the condition is now on the slots here here okay this condition is on the slots and this condition will turn out to be same 2 into m minus 1 greater than or equal to n is m by n switches in the first stage and n by m switches in the third stage and whatever number of switching elements you use here that is a cross bar size in the middle stage but it should be able to switch very fast so we will actually do this exercise of actually building up a circuit uh, or a circuit schematic by which we will figure out how this switching actually happens ok Huh? Oh, sorry. <laughs> right, right. You are right. This should be this. You are right. Okay. So, now actually I can also do because I have about 8 minutes. So, blocking probability estimate. Now, this is going to be valid for this case as well as for the earlier class network both. So, this approach because Carnot's approach will take time. So, let me do what is called Lee's approach. And we already know when the probability of blocking goes to 0. And you will be able to find out that under this condition, Lee's approximation does not give you the blocking probability equal to 0. So, the case here is an incoming port. It is connected to middle stage switches. One link to one switch. Okay. So, this is my free outgoing port, free incoming port. Probability of blocking is when both are free, I will not be able to set up the connection. Okay. And we assume that this switch has an incoming port. I am just, okay, I, let me keep it M only because that is for consistency. We are using M by N and these are N outgoing ports. Uh, there are other switches of similar kind. Those does not matter for us actually. I can only take this. It will also give me the same blocking probability. Hmm? So, when the switch will, I will not be able to set up the connection. I can now do some approximations. One very simple is, uh, I can assume that this link is going to be busy. I can estimate a probability of that. Let this probability be P. P is a probability with which the link will be occupied or busy. Now, remember these two links are independent. I can even, I can make that assumption. Actually, that is not true, but I am making that this assumption. But uh, you may say ki because there is only one path, this, whenever this is busy, this should be busy. No, that is not true. There are other switches also. So, if I set up a connection this way, I can occupy this one, but this link is free. 
that is possible. So, input links and output links, that is the way we define, are independent of each other and they get occupied with probability p, both of them. So, this also gets occupied with probability of p, it is a symmetric condition. So, this is m here, this is n here. And when you will not be able to set up the path, if you can find out even one switch in any one of these for which incoming and outgoing input and output links both are available, you will be able to set up the connection. This is strictly non blocking, this element and this element is also strictly non blocking. Okay. So, probability of blocking. Now, this two pair is not free. What is the probability of that? 1 minus that both of them are free. That is the probability. That will happen either this is busy or this is busy or both are busy. You have the sum of these three possibilities. So, I will do 1 minus p that the link will be free. Both the links will be free because they are independent. So, I can simply multiply the probabilities. 1 minus of this is the probability that the path will be through that switch will be busy. So, 1 minus of that and how many such links are there, n such bridges are there, n, n such branches. Okay. So, this is the probability of blocking estimate, but how you will get the p? So, we take here a simple example n usually is larger than m. If it is smaller then the blocking will happen at this itself. So, blocking is not happening because of switch, it is always happening because of the interconnection network. Hmm? So, I will assume that A is the arrival rate or arrival probability a link, incoming link will be busy that occupancy probability is A. Okay. So, A into M should be equal to P into N the balance condition always statistically. Because whenever this link will be busy, one link has to be busy here. And since the n is larger, so probability a link will be busy will be lower actually. So, n multiplied by the p should be equal to m multiplied by m. So, I can get p from here as a into m by n. So, because n is larger, m is a smaller. So, a is multiplied by a fraction. So, p will be smaller actually. So, I can write that thing here. So, this was one of the crudest uh, approximations which was invented earlier. Now, you put value of n is equal to 2 m minus 1, do you get a 0? Oh, m by n sorry sorry sorry. You put n is equal to 2 m minus 1 you would not get a 0, but we know we get we actually have no blocking at that point p b should be 0. So, this estimation is an approximation this does not give the actual estimation and reason is that there actually the reasons are that your arrival rate here is dependent on the state. I can define the state as number of incoming links is busy and number of outgoing links is busy. Probability of blocking dynamically changes actually with that depending it is a state dependent. Okay. So, if I define this sigma as a state technically probability of blocking is function of a state sigma. So, I have to average it out over all states. So, here it was all state independent thing. So, tomorrow's class uh, uh, what I will do is because uh, we are making the recording. So, quiz will be done separately this time, it will not be in tomorrow's class. So, most likely tomorrow night uh, you have to sit on your computer. So, we will do a trial run and after that I think quiz will be done live online itself. So, there will be a time window, it will be open for I think 20 minutes, within that you have to write down the answer on the computer. <laughs> okay. 
So, we will try that thing out because uh, I cannot afford to waste time in taking the quiz. Otherwise, recording will be of shorter duration. All recording has to be of uh, 15 minute duration. Okay. So, tomorrow we will have a regular class. So, quiz most likely will be happening. I think uh, tomorrow night I will be doing the we will be, I will be doing trial and then so that you also know how it is done. You will get some mock uh, result and mock marks also in that. So, day after tomorrow you will actually have the regular quiz depending on the yesterday's result. Marks you will get automatically at the same time. It will be automatic grading by the machine. So, objective. objective yeah. <laughs> but then the problem is statement will be made in such a way that you have to do something before you can give the answer. It will be with negative marks. <laughs> okay. So, you can get minus also. So, uh, your mark sheet will can contain negative marks. <laughs> so, that is the only thing. They can be more, they have to be made more because you should not get time to do the cut paste from all them one person to another person. <laughs> you all might sit down on the same laptop. So, from one single laptop, two people cannot give the answer. I have to ensure that. Okay. So, that way our system will also get tested. So, tomorrow we will do the trial uh, around I think it will be uh, 10 midnight, 10 e evening it will be fine. So, all of you can be in your halls and do it from there itself. But you have to arrange for a machine that is the only thing. Okay. So, and everybody has the in a connectivity login. and machine. Login the same Braspati login will work. So, only thing it opens at that particular time it actually closes also at dot time. <laughs> So, if, if even if you are one second late, it won't accept the answer after that. So, that's why I will give multiple questions. If you miss, you miss only one question, not one. Uh, not actually, there is no, it will not be one question, maybe say five questions. But, but, but any problem due to happen still technical connections and what type of condition or it is a very technical problem. Every time I can coupling it is a problem, I cannot do it. So, how will you resolve this? No, most likely there should not be. That's why there is a rehearsal. No? <laughs> If it is true for that time, most likely it will be working. Well, we have tested the system. And if there is a problem, we have to understand and resolve that issue. And we make it more and more sturdy. Well, we should be able to figure out that there is actually is a problem. You cannot simply say there is a problem. And if it is going to be a problem, I will take, I will just call you for 15 minutes, probably on Saturday and have the quiz that time. 